What's up? This is Alex, DJ Couch King, and welcome to episode 7 of my beginner series in Ableton Live 10. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can get started making music using Ableton Live 10's Session View. The Session View is one of the most unique, powerful, and often underutilized features of Ableton Live 10. It looks intimidating at first, but by the end of this video, you'll have a pretty good understanding of how it works and how you can use it to make music. I included a free Ableton Live 10 project file to accompany this lesson. The link is in the description below, so make sure you pause this video and download that before you continue on. I'll also put the timestamps in the description so you can jump around to the different parts if you need to. Before we jump into the tutorial, I'd like to talk a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, but don't click off the video just yet. If you're new to music production, you're going to want to hear this. Today's video is brought to you by On Your Frequency. On Your Frequency is a new online platform for aspiring music producers where you can post questions about your music software, you can get feedback on your tracks, and you can book lessons with professional instructors. You can get on-demand help by connecting with the first available expert or book a lesson with the instructor of your choice. And if you're wondering, yes, I'll be one of the instructors available to book on the platform. Or you can look through the instructor profiles and connect with one who you think will be the right fit for you and your style of music production. It's fast, it's one-on-one, -on -one, and the on-demand sessions are free for the first 10 minutes. After that, you can pay to continue or book a lesson for a later time. Sign up using the invite code in the description below, and you'll get two free sample packs after you post your first question. If you need help now and you don't want to wait, check out onyourfrequency.com and sign up today. Once again, all of the information will be in the description below. Now let's jump into Ableton Live and get started with the tutorial. Once you have Ableton Live 10 open, go up to File, then click Open Live Set. Navigate to the folder where you downloaded the project file from the link in the description. Make sure you unzip it first or you'll have to go back to your downloads folder and unzip it there. Open the folder, then double click on the project file. When you open it up, it should look just like this. There should be five tracks labeled drum rack, shaker loop, bass sample, keys, and vocal sample. I only used sounds and instruments that are in the Ableton Live core library, so this should open fine regardless of whether you have Ableton Live Lite, Intro, Standard, or Suite. I'm using Ableton Live 10.1.15. Any version equal to that or later should open this project just fine. If you have any problems, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help fix it. Let's break the session view down into three main components. We have tracks, clips, and scenes. The tracks are the vertical columns in the main window. Each of these cells below the track label contain a single clip. There should already be one clip on each track. Scenes are a collection of clips that are all on the same horizontal row. If you look all the way to the right on the master track, you'll see the scene numbers one through four. Let's start by playing some clips. All you have to do is click on the little play button next to the clip to start playing it, Let's start with the drum clip. To stop playback at any point, press the spacebar or click the stop button in the transport up at the top. Now that the drum clip has been played, you'll see that the play button is highlighted green. This means that any time I press play on the transport or on another clip, the drum clip will start playing. Let's start playing the shaker clip. You'll notice that the shaker clip and the drum clip started playing in perfect sync. Now let's add the bass clip, but instead of pressing play on the clip, press the space bar to start playback and then add the bass after. You may have noticed a slight delay before the bass clip started playing. This is because of the global quantize setting on the top left. Anytime you launch a clip or scene, it will use this setting to determine when a clip or scene will play next. This is how Live keeps all of your clips in perfect sync. You can change this setting, but for this tutorial, we're gonna leave it at one bar. If you wanna stop a single clip from playing, go down to the bottom of the clip matrix and click on the stop button just above the mixer section. Let's press the space bar to start playback and then stop the drum clip. If you want to stop all the clips from playing, press the little stop button below the scenes on the master track on the right hand side. You'll notice that the global quantize affects stopping clips as well as playing them. Let's make sure all of our clips are stopped by clicking that stop button on the master track and then press play on scene number one. The drum clip 
keys clip and vocal clip all start playing at once because they're all in line with scene one on the master track. If we play scene two, the shaker clip and bass clip will play. If we want to move the shaker clip and the bass clip to the other scene, we can just drag them right up. We can also copy clips to other scenes by right clicking on it, selecting copy, right clicking on an empty cell, clicking paste, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts, click on the clip, hit Control or Command C, click on the empty clip, and then hit Control or Command V to paste. Now if we hit play on scene number one, all of our clips will start playing at the same time. Only one of these clips can be playing on any track at any time. Now that we have a basic understanding of how clips and scenes work, let's take a look at how to record in the session view. First, make sure that all of the clips are stopped by pressing the clip stop again on the master channel. Now let's record a kick drum part into our drum rack track. Make sure to click the record arm button at the very bottom of the drum rack track. That's this red button right here. Make sure that this is highlighted red. Now let's look up at the transport at the top and click on the metronome, which is these two little dots next to our global quantize. You'll notice that there are two circular record buttons up here on the transport at the top, one that's filled in and one that's hollow. The one that's filled in records into the arrangement view, but that's not what we want. We want to use this one that's hollow over here. This is the session record button. Let's click on the empty cell below our drum clip to select it. Press the session record and Live will create a new clip and start recording. When you press the session record again, Live will stop recording and immediately start looping what you just played. I didn't actually play anything, so right now it's just going to be looping an empty clip. This time I'm going to play in a simple quarter note kick drum pattern on my MIDI keyboard. First let me just delete this clip that we're not going to use, make sure I have the empty one selected, and then I'll click session record. You can see that I didn't hit the session record button fast enough, so there is a section of silence on the second half of this clip. This is because the global quantize waits until the next full bar to stop the recording. If I come down to my clip editor window, I can see all of the information about the clip I just recorded on the left hand side. I'm going to click where it says length in the first box and change that to one bar. Now the kick drum part will loop correctly when I press play. If I want to get rid of that unused space, I can right click inside the clip editor and select crop clip. But what if I wanted to record this on an existing clip instead of to a new clip? If I go back up to the transport, right next to the arrangement record button is this little plus sign. This activates and deactivates overdubbing, which essentially means recording new parts to an already existing clip. Make sure to click on this to activate it, which it should be highlighted yellow. This time I'll record the same pattern to the existing drum clip and I'm just going to delete this one. So now that I have overdub activated, I can just click the session record, and then I'm going to record that same kick drum pattern to this existing drum clip. If I let it keep recording, it will continue to let me add parts to this clip. My timing wasn't perfect, so I'll right click in the clip area and choose quantize to tighten up the recording. Now if we launch scene one again, we should have something that sounds like a pretty simple house music beat. And at this point we can go ahead and turn off the metronome. If for some reason you're unable to record in the kick drum part with a MIDI keyboard or your computer keyboard, you can just draw these parts in by double clicking the empty spaces with the mouse. You'll want to make sure you have this pattern before continuing on to the next part of the tutorial. Recording audio in the session view works about the same as MIDI, the only real difference being that you cannot overdub onto an existing clip. If you'd like to see a video about live looping audio, let me know in the comments below. It can be a bit tricky to master and I think it deserves its own video, so let's move on to taking this loop and starting to make a song out of it. In order to start turning this loop into a song, we're going to need 
more than just one scene. We can easily duplicate this scene just by right clicking on the scene on the master track and selecting duplicate, or even quicker by just hitting control or command D once the scene is selected. So let's duplicate that two more times. And then we can delete these scenes that we're not going to use by selecting them and pressing the delete key on the keyboard. Now we can start removing some elements and adding some elements to make these scenes sound different from each other. Right now they all would sound exactly the same if you go through and play them. Start by removing the shaker clip, bass clip, and vocal clip from scene one by clicking on the clip and then pressing the delete key. We can also go in and edit the individual clips, so let's go into the drum clip and remove the kick drum from the first scene. Double click on the drum clip to open it, then come down and click on the white key next to the kick to select all the notes, and then press the delete key to delete them. Now the scene should sound like this if you play the first one. Let's also remove the drum clip from scene two by clicking on it and deleting it. Let's replace it with the one that we just edited by clicking on it, hitting Control or Command C, clicking on the empty clip, and then hitting Control or Command V. Now let's remove the shaker clip and vocal clip from scene number two. Press play on scene two and it should now sound like this. Now let's remove everything from scene three except for the bass clip and vocal clip. Now we have four different scenes that each have some variation to them. Take a minute to play around with launching these four scenes. Start by launching them in order and then in different orders. I'll go ahead and just launch them in order so you can hear what it should sound like. You can see already that we're starting to build different parts of a track. You can give these scenes different names to start outlining a structure for your song. All you have to do is right click on a scene and select rename. I'll name these parts intro 1, intro 2, breakdown, and drop. You can also rename it just by hitting control or command R. The last thing I'm going to do with this is record a couple more drum parts into the drop just to make it a little bit more exciting. I'll add a clap and an open hi-hat just to add a little more variation to this drum pattern. You don't have to copy this exactly, I'm just showing you how you can continue to add variation to the different scenes. If you want to make a clip longer, you can come down into the clip editor and click the button that says duplicate loop or dupe loop for short. I'm going to duplicate this loop twice, and then I'm going to add a fill to the end over here. From here you can continue to duplicate scenes and add or remove parts or even change up the drums or other patterns completely to create new parts. I'm going to stop here for this tutorial. There are a lot more advanced features in the session view, but this should be enough to get you going. I highly encourage you to continue experimenting with this project and have fun making some music. Feel free to use these sounds for your own projects and share with me what you make. In the next video, we will look at how to take these scenes from the session view and start recording our song into the arrangement view. Thanks for checking this video out. If you like this video and you learned something from it, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Also, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring the notification bell so you can get all the videos in this series as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. Peace.